Hello, and welcome along to Smoke Training. In this second part of looking at tracking masks in Smoke 2013, we take a look at tracking the individual mask points. I'll show you the difference between the axis and mask point trackers, drawing and selecting a mask shape, and applying the trackers to individual mask points. In our previous episode, we looked at how we can take a simple mask in smoke, and by tracking a single point on screen, we can quickly make our mask match the movement in the clip. This is great for simple masks where the shape or distortion of the mask doesn't change over time. Let's take tracking masks a step further. In this same shot we tracked previously, let's say for example we wanted to darken down one of these windows here slightly. Previously we had an unaffected version of the shot on the bottom, and we then duplicated the same shot on top again. What we did here on the top layer was to apply a colour warper effect to change the colour of the red flag in the image. Because there was a significant amount of red in the picture elsewhere, we used masking to have the colour change happen just on the flag. In the last episode, we used a single point track to quickly animate the mask position to match the location of the flag. We want to add to this effect, so let's start by taking the bottom layer and duplicating it and placing it on the top. By holding down Shift and Option, click on the bottom layer and drag upwards. If you continue to hold down Shift and Option as you drag, the duplicated clip will snap into the correct place. Let's start by adding a simple color corrector effect. With the clip selected, hit Control tab to bring up the effect chooser. Select Color Corrector. This will suit our needs just fine as all we need to do is darken down the image slightly. Now we need to add a mask so that this new layer of color correction only affects this particular window. Bring up the effects chooser and select Wipe. Remembering from previous episodes, Wipe is effectively a mask. It defaults to being an animated wipe that lasts the length of the shot. We don't require this, so select All Nodes here and then click Delete. This removes all traces of the default wipe, all ready for us to add our own. Click the Add button. Let's draw a mask around the window frame. Zoom in if required using the Command plus keyboard shortcut. And then hold down Control and Command to get the hand cursor which enables you to pan the zoomed image around the screen. Click down to start drawing the mask. Plotting points as required. Remember if you want to add more of a curve to a point as you go. Click, hold and drag as you plot a point. Finally, click back down on the first point you created to close the mask. Using the Break Tangents option located here in the Tools menu, we can click on some of the mask points and turn them into corners so that it better matches the area we are masking. What we did previously at this stage was to enter the stabilizer over here on the left. What that enabled us to do was to track a single point in the image and apply that positional information to our mask. The mask never changed shape, so all that happens is that the mask has been moved to match the tracking data that was collected. This time we can tell Smoke to create a tracking point for every mask point that we've created. So it's very important to remember that each point you add when creating the mask will become a tracking point. So choose your mask points carefully and think whether or not it will be a successful tracking point or not. Also, try to keep your mask points to a minimum as there will be a tracker added for every mask point you add yourself. This stabilize button located here is purely for applying tracking data to selected mask points. Selected mask points, that is the key for this process to work. To make sure all the mask points are selected, hold down the command key and draw a rectangular selection that covers all the mask points. If you have successfully selected all the mask points, they'll now be highlighted red. One last thing to check before we jump into the stabilizer. If we have adjusted any of the mask splines ourselves, like what we did here by using the break tangent tool to create sharp corners for the mask, we will need to make sure that adjust tangents off is set here, otherwise the tracker will adjust the tangents itself as required. Enter the stabilizer. You can see straight away the number of tracking markers that have been created. Now click analyze to begin the tracking process. Smoke is now collecting the tracking data for each mask point that we added. And it looks as though Smoke has successfully completed this track for us. Head back to the mask menu by clicking return over here on the left. If we scroll through the shot now we can see our mask has now been tracked to match the mask points we created. 
apply any global softness here to help improve the mask. It's worth pointing out that this is not a miracle tool. You'll only have success if you choose good tracking markers to begin with. It's definitely worth trying this first to see if you can save yourself hours of time on endless manual animation of masks. It's really worth spending the time to get up to speed on the masking tools in Autodesk Smoke, as it is one tool that can really help you shave time off any effects job. That brings to a close this episode of Smoke Training. Thank you for watching. Just a reminder about some of the key points covered in this episode. When tracking a mask's individual points, pay careful attention to where you place the mask points as these will become tracking points themselves. Hold down Command and draw a rectangular selection covering all the mask points before accessing the tracker. Stay tuned for future episodes of Smoke Training that provide you with short, clear tutorials to get you up to speed on the basics fast. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>